Hi, it's Krista from Playing With a Purpose. This week in our classroom, we're learning all about worms. We started off reading a couple of stories. This one's called Worm Weather, and this one is called Wiggly Worm. After we were finished reading the stories, we followed up with a couple of worm activities. The first thing we did was we made a worm hotel. And I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to see. Oh, here we go. I went out on the weekend and I purchased some worms. They were actually difficult to find since there's still snow on the ground here, but I managed to find some at a little bait shop in a town nearby. So I was pretty excited. The children had an opportunity to hold the worms if they wanted to. It was pretty interesting to see that some of the children were so excited about the worms but they didn't want to come anywhere close to holding a worm whereas some of the children couldn't get enough they just could, they didn't want to put the worms away this was a fun hands-on opportunity to how to be gentle and so that we didn't hurt the worm they could observe the worm they could see how the worm moved after we put the worms in our little worm hotel we pretended to be worms and asked them how did the worm move and they were like wiggle 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 so we got down on the ground and we pretended to be worms so we put we filled it up with dirt we made sure it was a little bit moist we put some little air holes in our container and we labeled it just to add a little bit of environmental print. So we put a worm hotel in the front with a picture. Because worms want to stay inside where it's dark, what I did was I took a toilet paper roll and I cut into a toilet paper roll so that I could make it more narrow. And then I taped it back together again and I stacked it twice. If you have a paper towel roll, that would work better. So I first started it off with just a little bit of dirt and then I stuck down the tube in the middle. I wanted to encourage the worms to stay on the outside so because worms like to stay where it's dark they would be more inclined to stay in the middle. Worms will eventually eat the paper and that's okay we just wanted to have them out for a week or so anyways just to be able to have a closer peek at them and then we just make sure that the soil stays a little bit moist and we put little tiny pieces of, you could put fruit or some scraps of salad or they'll, they eat anything. And we just leave that out in our science area. So that's the first activity we did. The next activity we did was I picked up some fishing lures and they're worms. I love these ones because they actually look real. But these ones actually look like worms. We talked about how the worms inside our worm hotel are real. Just like we see birds outside flying and they are real. And then I picked up a stuffed animal bird and I said, this is pretend. That bird is real. And then I explained to them that this was pretend and these worms were real. So we were going to paint with pretend worms. By taking the time to explain this process, it gives the children a better understanding of real and make-believe, and it also gives them new vocabulary words. Then I gave them each a little dish with some brown paint, and I put a little bit of water in it and mixed it up so that it would be a little bit thinner. And then I simply asked the children to dip their worms in the brown paint, which we called mud, and they made worm paintings super simple activity while they are dipping it into the paint it helps with their hand-eye coordination it also helps with their pincer grasp when they're picking up the worms they're practicing their fine motor skills this is a super fun easy activity to do with toddlers or preschoolers at circle time we listened to Herman the worm Herman the worm is a popular children's song that's super fun and engaging for the children. It's filled with fun and silly movements and it teaches the children counting, vocabulary, sequencing, and measurement. After listening to the song a few times, we did a math activity. For this activity, what I wanted the children to do was practice their scissor skills. And in addition to that, I also wanted to introduce them early math skills. 
My children are two years old, so I like to use these type of scissors. They are easy for them to open and close. I also have but these I... kind of scissors where they're bounce back and it makes, it makes the scissors bounce back. And I also have these scissors where you can have the children put their fingers in and the teacher come in behind them to help them learn that motion of opening and shutting. I also absolutely love Play-Doh scissors. So Play-Doh scissors is another great way to develop scissor cutting skills. So you could make a worm with Play-Doh and you could use Play-Doh scissors and have the children cut the worms. But for this activity, what I did was I used some brown cardstock and I gave the children some thin pieces of paper with some lines on it. Once they located the lines, I asked the children to cut on the lines like that another thing you could use to make worms is give them all a ball of yarn and ask them to make worms so this is a great activity but I find with my children are two years old it's too difficult for them to be able to make a proper cut to cut the yarn. But if you have three or four year olds, this would be a great activity. Older children would be able to do this easier and it's a fun, different way for them to practice their scissor skills. Once the children have their pieces cut out of the cardstock, I ask the children which worm is the biggest or which worm is the longest I have them glue them on a piece of paper and I give a little explanation of what we did for the parents. Sometimes if we send home a Ziploc of cut up string, a parent might be confused and not understand what the child has learned. If it's not obvious what the children were learning, I like to give the parents an idea of what we practiced. So in this case, we talked about how they practice their scissor skills and measurement. I'm Krista with Playing With A Purpose. I'll see you next time.